Hi, my name is John and I work at American AVK. AVK is a leading worldwide manufacturer of valves for the water, gas, wastewater, and fire protection industries. We are continuously developing new innovations and technologies to better serve our customers. We manufacture all of our products in the United States at our 180,000 square foot ISO 9001 certified facility located in Minden, Nevada. All of us at AVK strive to deliver the best quality products with improved first in your market features, meeting our customers' needs today and into the future. In this video, we will show you how to replace a valve disc on a Series 24 wet barrel fire hydrant. As part of this process, we will also show you how to remove and replace a dummy nut and an outlet nozzle. AVK replacement parts are available from your local AVK distributor. Warning, for all of the following repair procedures, the hydrant must be isolated or the system depressurized and drained before removing the hydrant components. Failure to do so may cause pressure to be released, resulting in severe injury or death. AVK Series 24 fire hydrants have two types of nozzles, depending on the model. Bayonet style nozzles and screwed in nozzles. In this video, we will show you both types of nozzles, but most of the demonstrations will be shown on the bayonet style nozzles. For bayonet nozzles, use a five millimeter Allen wrench, remove the nozzle retaining screw, then rotate the nozzle in a clockwise direction approximately 40 degrees until the nozzle slot aligns with the lug opening on the nozzle section, located at the six o'clock position on the two outlet hydrants or the nine o'clock position on the middle outlet of the three outlet hydrants. For bayonet nozzles, push the cap nozzle assembly outward by turning the valve in a closing direction until the nozzle lugs are between the nozzle section lugs. Loosen the cap and then finish removing the nozzle. For threaded nozzles, use a three millimeter Allen wrench to remove the nozzle retaining screw Open the valve partially and then unscrew the nozzle and remove. Using a 1564 or 6 mm Allen wrench, remove the dummy nut retaining bolt and then remove the dummy nut. The valve stem can now be unscrewed from the stem nut and removed from the nozzle section. Rotate in the closing direction. If necessary, replace the inner stem nut o rings and the hose nozzle o ring. Use a three millimeter Allen wrench to remove the thrust nut retaining screw. Remove the valve disc from the thrust nut by unscrewing it. Push the thrust nut towards the valve stem threads and remove the thrust collars. Remove the thrust nut from the valve stem. Remove the thrust nut O-ring from the valve stem. Now we will begin reassembling. Replace the thrust nut O-ring. The thrust nut o-ring acts as a brake to prevent the disc from spinning when water is flowing through the hydrant. Do not grease the thrust nut o-rings. Wipe off any grease that may have gotten on the o-ring during assembly. Slide the thrust nut over the stem end that has the o-ring. Push the thrust nut over the o-ring to make room for the thrust collars. The threads of the thrust nut need to point toward the short end so the valve disc can be threaded on. Grease the inside grooves of the thrust collar with a food grade grease that contains no acetate or silicone. Install the thrust collar over the grooves of the stem. Wipe off any grease that may have gotten on the thrust nut o-ring. Pull the thrust nut up over the collars until it stops. Screw the valve disc and thrust nut together until hand tight. Then use the appropriate hand tools to tighten. Apply a drop of thread locking compound, Loctite 242 or equal, to the end of the thrust nut retaining screw and screw into the hole on the side of the valve disc and tighten with a 3 mm Allen wrench. Check the valve disc assembly. It should be tight enough to prevent linear movement on the stem, but loose enough that you can rotate the assembly on the stem by hand. Do not grease the threads of the stem. Put food grade grease that contains no acetate or silicone on the inside threads of the stem nut then screw the stem valve disc assembly onto the stem nut. Place a dummy nut under the pentagon of the stem and secure it with a dummy nut retaining bolt that has a drop of thread locking compound, Loctite 242 or equal, on it. Tighten the bolt with a six millimeter Allen wrench. 
Insert the greased cap nozzle assembly into the nozzle section ellet until the nozzle lugs are in line with the nozzle section lugs. Slowly rotate the cap nozzle assembly counterclockwise approximately 40 degrees until the slotted nozzle lug aligns with the nozzle retaining screw. This can be verified by lining up the dimple with the nozzle retaining screw. Tighten the cap on the nozzle. For bayonet style nozzles, insert the cap nozzle assembly fully into the nozzle section. The valve may have to be turned in the opening direction to allow the nozzle to be inserted fully. Apply a drop of thread locking compound to the end of the retaining screw and using a 3 16 or 5 mm Allen wrench, tighten it until it contacts the nozzle and then back off 1 8 of a turn. For threaded in nozzles, screw the nozzle into the hydrant. Apply a drop of thread locking compound to the end of the retaining screw and using a 3 mm Allen wrench, tighten it until it contacts the nozzle. Verify that the cap has been secured. Verify that all outlets have been fully closed. Once the hydrant has been completely reassembled, turn on the water supply valve to check for leaks. We would like to thank you for purchasing an AVK product and being our customer. We pride ourselves on our quality, innovation, products, and solutions. Our customer support and local distributors are there to provide genuine AVK parts. For additional information and complete product manuals, please visit our website.